India was guided by one great charismatic leader for a highly eventful 17 years from the day of independence in 1947. He dominated the Indian scene like a colossus. Around the world, the question was raised, after Nehru, who? When the inevitable happened, all the attention of the world was focused on succession in India. Even as the people of India had still not got over the shock and grief in the midst of some who were genuinely concerned and others who were curious, a derisive laughter was heard in some quarters which assumed that there could be no peaceful succession in India. One hot summer day at Virudhunagar in Tamil Nadu, the temple elephant began to run amok when the Mahout was not available. A boy of 14 made bold to approach the elephant and control it. He had been friendly with the animal from childhood. Fifty years later, when the nation lost Hermahout, this boy would prevent the country from running amok. Kamaraj was born on July 15, 1903 to coconut merchant Kumaraswamy and Shivakami in Virudhinagar, a quiet, ancient town where time seemed to have remained frozen. He was born in a mud-walled ancestral home which has now been renovated and remodeled as Kamaraj Memorial. The family belonged to a very backward community. At the age of five, Kamaraj was sent to school, unusual for his family tradition. With his father passing away when he was hardly 12, the family economy did not permit young Kamaraj to continue his education beyond the sixth standard. After functioning for a short while as a sales boy in a cloth store, Kamaraj started on a path of intense self-education and was drawn into the freedom struggle. The first major satyagraha of temple entry for Harijans was at the Vaikam temple. Among the dedicated volunteers who dared to walk hand in hand with untouchables was teenager Kamaraj. He had taken his first step in a new direction. He was never to go back. Two teenage colleagues of Kamaraj recall with nostalgia that in this corner of the temple tank at Virudhinagar, little groups began to gather around their young leader to hear about Gandhiji and to share a distant dream called freedom. Identifying himself totally with the Gandhian philosophy, Kamaraj led the Hartal of liquor shops in Madurai in 1923. 
to divert him from his illegal activity, his mother tried to organize his wedding. But he realized that his was not going to be a peaceful domestic life. He remained single all his life. When Gandhiji launched his salt satyagraha, Congress volunteers in the south marched to the sea under the leadership of Rajaji and distilled illegal salt. Kamaraj was among those arrested by the police. When all the arrested congressmen were released in 1932, as a result of the Gandhi Irvin Pact, Kamaraj was given a hero's welcome in his hometown. He developed a style of speaking at this time in informal conversational Tamil, a style he retained all through his life. The Congress in Tamil Nadu was divided into two factions, led by Rajaji and Satyamurti. Kamaraj came under the influence of Satyamurti and remained his ardent follower. In 1937, he was elected unopposed from Satur constituency to the State Assembly. The Quit India movement in August 1942 placed an enormous responsibility on Kamaraj. He was in Bombay when the police opened fire. Most senior Congress leaders were already in prison. Rajaji had differed with Gandhiji and withdrawn from the movement. It was imperative for Kamaraj to tour his state. He travelled incognito, distributing leaflets on the struggle. In the crowded Velur junction, he could walk out of the train and literally make his way through the large police contingent unseen, even though they were specifically looking out for him. After completing his marathon journey through Tamil Nadu, he visited his mother and sent word to the police that his job was over and he was ready to go to jail. At the end of the Second World War, Kamaraj was released along with other congressmen. At the time of independence, in spite of the international stature of Rajaji, his prime opponent in state politics, Kamaraj had effective control over the Congress party in Tamil Nadu. In 1954, when Rajaji's successor had to be chosen for chief ministership, on Prime Minister Nehru's advice, Kamaraj took up the mantle himself. Truly reflecting the spirit of democracy, he invited into his cabinet C. Subramanyam, who had contested him for leadership, thus giving the party a sense of unity and ensuring that the best talents were roped in. In 1955, the Avadi Congress session, organized by Kamaraj, assembled in the outskirts of Madras city. It became a turning point in the history of the Congress party declaring democratic socialism to be its objective. This grand congress session was attended by such dignitaries as Marshal Tito of Yugoslavia. Kamaraj made it a point to honor his mentor Satyamurti at this session. Like the rest of the nation, Prime Minister Nehru was deeply impressed by Kamaraj's extraordinary ability as an organizer. During the nine years when Kamaraj was chief minister, Tamar Nadu made great strides in industry, power, education and social welfare. Having been deprived of formal education beyond the sixth standard, he declared all school education free up to high school. Tamar Nadu was the first to implement this scheme in the country. Concerned with the fact that most poor parents could not afford to give a proper meal to their kids, leave alone sending them to school, Kamaraj launched the innovative new scheme of free midday meals to poor children in school. The Kamaraj cabinet, which included stalwarts like M. Bhaktavatsalam and R. Venkatraman, besides C. Subramanyam, brought to Tamil Nadu many new industries, including aluminium, cement and paper. A new concept of industrial estates was introduced by inaugurating the first one at Gindi. 
several small-scale industries were also promoted all over the state. The Kamaraj period was truly the golden age of Tamil Nadu. His team brought to Tamil Nadu the Navy mines and thermal stations, the Integral Coach Factory, and the Bharat Heavy Electricals. Tamil Nadu became the only state to use over 85% of river waters for irrigation. The state made great strides in hydel power and rural electrification. In the early 1960s, Kamaraj was deeply disturbed by the growing national tension and the lack of unity within the Congress party. He suggested to the Prime Minister that senior congressmen should resign from their positions of power and devote their time to building up the party. This sacrifice of giving up office reminded the people of the great sacrifices during the freedom struggle. Nehruji accepted the Kamaraj plan and he paid his tribute to Kamaraj by electing him as president of the All India Congress Committee. Kamaraj presided over the Bhubaneswar Congress where the Congress attracted many new socialist talents and committed itself to a new dynamic ideology and program of action. Having risen from the ranks of the party in four decades, for the next four fateful years in a row, Kamaraj held the august and responsible office as president of the Congress party. He emerged as a formidable force in the national scene, maintaining cordial relations with many statesmen of different political hues from all parts of the country. The spectacular rise of Kamaraj, born in a backward class, without formal education, with no inherited or acquired material wealth, represents the fulfillment of the ideals of Indian democracy. He remained a simple man at heart, reflected by his simple dress wherever he went, earning him the popular title of Kala Gandhi. For any man in public life, his unimpeachable integrity became an enviable example to emulate. Acquainting himself with the many problems of the nation, including defense, he enjoyed his lighter moments as well. With Nehru passing away in 1964, Kamaraj led the country amidst darkness to unanimously elect the new leader, Lal Bahadur Shastri. Hardly within two years, at the height of his achievement, Prime Minister Shastri passed away in Tashkent. Once more, the nation had to elect a new leader. Kamaraj played a decisive role again in electing Mrs. Indira Gandhi as the leader of the Congress Parliamentary Party to become the nation's third Prime Minister. The world at large expected a greater future role for the Kingmaker. Leaders of the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe invited Kamaraj to tour their countries in 1966. Who could imagine that the great man was to get defeated at the polls in his home state? An electoral disaster awaited the Congress party in Tamil Nadu in 1967. When the opposition DMK came to power in the state, Kamaraj faced his defeat with a smile. He advised his partyman to give a reasonable time for the new government to function without becoming hypocritical. Kamaraj was elected to the parliament in 1969 and again in 1971. He never returned to power. 
his difference of opinion with Mrs. Gandhi on the question of the devaluation of the Indian rupee in 1966 led to a strained relationship. History saw him and Mrs. Gandhi in opposite camps. But he had no regrets. In 1967, Rajaji had played a significant role in dislodging the Congress from power in Tamil Nadu. In their last days, Rajaji and Kamaraj came together for the first time in an attempt to set right the wrongs they considered they had done to their state by their mutual differences. Neither of them lived long enough to achieve this. On October 2nd, 1975, in his modest rented house in Madras, Kamaraj was getting ready to participate in Mahatma Gandhi's 106th birthday celebrations. He never delivered that last speech. Active till the last minute, he succumbed to a sudden heart attack. The nation lost yet another valiant son, an honored member of the vanishing tribe of freedom fighters. He was posthumously awarded the Bharat Ratma, independent India's highest official honor. Every year, the people of Tamil Nadu celebrate his birthday with much gaiety. But Kamaraj is not just a hallowed name today. He is a living influence, a cherished memory, a source of inspiration to new generations. <laughs>